Hi. Hi. Welcome to Why Are We Like This, a Heart Stopper podcast. I'm Ashley, she, her. And I'm Alyssa, she, they. And today we are diving back into the comics with chapter four. Woo! Woo! Full disclosure. Take two. Yeah, we're full <laughs> disclosure. We did this already once and it wasn't recording. So uh, we're back again. <laughs> so if we sound a little bit like tired or we're like, mm-hmm. you know, I think I said this, you know, before, but it's because we had this conversation a week ago and it didn't record yeah. and we didn't realize it until we were like 45 minutes in and, and very sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like literally it was like, do you want to try again? And I was just like, no. Oh yeah. I'm like, we need to put, a, we need to put some space in between this now. Yes. <laughs> And then, I mean, it sucked because then I went out, I left the state for five, for four days. Nah, it's fine. It happens. This was like the earliest that I could do too. So it worked out actually. It all worked out. Yeah. Um. So we have decided this volume is large. And so it we're going to split it into three parts. This will be the pre-Paris part. And then we're mm-hmm. splitting Paris into two parts as well. So there will be three episodes on this chapter. Yeah. But first... Couple things to talk a little about. Announcement. Yeah. So you might have seen in Discord, if you're on the Discord, where you might not have seen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I recently shared the very exciting news that I am pregnant and expecting Woo! a little bab this coming February. Snap, 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 snap. <laughs> very excited. Um, and I did just want to say. Thank you to all of the wonderful humans who reached out to me on Discord and also to Ashley on my behalf <laughs> yes. on Instagram um, just to share uh, congratulations and love. It was very, very nice. We're very excited. But yeah, so those times where in recent recordings <laughs> and, and book clubs, I've been like, yeah, I've been sick lately. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have been sick lately. So <laughs> um shout out to Ashley for dealing with my nonsense of like rescheduling and also just being like, hey, my memory sucks. And <laughs> I'm really sorry that you're gonna have to edit all of these burps out of the recording. <laughs> but this is life. <laughs> I will say gluten has been a very helpful scapegoat. <laughs> Although, to be fair, at book club, I had also just been (laughs) glued. So um, So that was a double whammy. It was a double whammy. Yeah, fun times. (laughs) Well, Um, I'm excited for y'all. I'm excited, too. I am really excited for this part of it to be over, though. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But yes, it's been very exciting so far. Slay. Okay. So, chapter four out, which is the entirety of volume three. She thick? She is thick. And if you are, if you do not remember this from our previous coverage of the comics, we are basically just covering what the show has gone up to. So, this is basically covering what season Season two. two covered minus a plus or minus a couple of things just because they did go a little out of order yeah also typically ashley you can correct me if this isn't the case right now but typically i have my paperback scholastic edition and ashley is reading off of tapas correct so sometimes we're gonna be like wait what (laughs) that's not what mine says there's some differences between the two, so that's what makes it fun. Um, I also have the, like, hardback shiny ones just to to double check when we have some discrepancies. Excellent. To be like, is this a U.S. scholastic change? Right. Is this a published edition <laughs> change? What's yes. happening here? Because scholastic do be like to change shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it annoys me every time. <laughs> Freaking scholastic. Anyway. Yeah, so in the printed versions, it starts out with a diary entry. Mm -hmm. This is like a diary entry that functions as an excellent previously on Heartstopper Volume 2. Yes, yes. (laughs) Yeah, so we have a journal entry from Nick from Sunday, May 23rd. And I love that it's got like all like flashback panels from 
volume yeah, two. Yeah, it's so cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it says, so I came out as bisexual to my mom. It feels like it's all happened so fast, but so much has happened. It's less than two months since me and Charlie kissed for the first and second time, then started sort of going out, aka lots more kissing. And it's very important for me that you know that lots is underlined once, more is underlined once, and kissing is underlined three times. Also, lots more kissing is written in all caps with a period between each word. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And then I spent some time trying to figure out my sexuality, which still feels kind of confusing sometimes. Sexuality is complicated, but bisexual feels right. Smiley face. I love the little smiley face. There is a smiley face there. And now we're officially boyfriends. That feels so awesome to say. I have a boyfriend! That is in all caps with four exclamation points. And then in parentheses it says, and he's amazing. Heart. We said we might start telling our friends and people at school, but how would we do that? No one even knows I like guys. And Charlie got bullied pretty badly when he was outed last year. Maybe it'd be better to keep it a secret for a bit longer. And then we get like the little title panel, which is like their little fingers touching. Mm -hmm. And it says out. And we get the leaves. I love that the leaves like flow through to tell like time passage. Mm -hmm. Ollie's sitting at the table, munch, munch, munching, being adorable. Yep. And Jane has signed the Paris trip permission form. Yes. Which I would like to note for the record states year 10, 11, Truham Higgs Paris trip does not say anything about language students. Netflix. <laughs> and I, I love just like looking over the permission. Actually, form it does say language. Where if you look, does it say that? You can see language GCSE students. Oh, what the hell? I retract all of my righteous <laughs> integrity for the entire... I've just noticed See, it. I get more hung up on the uh, this trip only costing 100 pounds. Yeah, that seems To cover inaccurate. transport, accommodation, activities, along with the H-E something that's covered by Jane's hand. Yeah. Which does not seem like a lot of money. No. They had to get some, like, hella discounts. <laughs> I'm so bad at money, and I am aware that this is variable. And the conversion rate is not exactly the same as it would have been when Alice wrote this. Um, but a hundred pounds is equivalent to about a hundred and twenty-nine US dollars. Not enough. Which still is not enough because they're there for June twenty-eighth to July fourth. That's like what a week? Yeah. Seven days. Yeah. And I, I get that they're splitting the rooms amongst four students. But like Hiring the bus, plus whatever the fare is to put a bus on a train, right? Plus accommodations, plus activities, and they do a lot of activities. They do a lot of activities. I don't know how much admission to all those museums cost, and I, it doesn't. It also doesn't specify food or like pocket money. Yeah. So, like, presumably the parents also have to give the kids additional money for that. But, yeah, this is, they must have gotten some kind of mega deal. (laughs) Yeah. For it to only be a hundred pounds per kid. I'm trying to look at just the Louvre to see what tickets to the Louvre are. Okay, 22 pounds for an individual ticket to the museum. Yeah, but that right there is just about a quarter of... Yeah, and that's only (laughs) one... Of the... Well, and like to be fair, like you can get group rates to most museums that are like a little bit discounted, but not right crazy discounted. Have you ever planned a trip for students to attend Paris from England? If so, let us know <laughs> if we're just completely skewed. Is there some kind of like because the, this, I'm like I'm wondering if maybe there is money in the school's budget and this is offsetting. It could like, be, yeah. That that's like the only thing that I'm thinking is like, okay, maybe they have a set amount of money in the budget for this trip each year. Mm -hmm. And then the students just have to pay the difference. Right. In order to, you know, get to go on the trip. Yeah. It also might just be like good faith money of like, 
you're spending money on this trip. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't act like an idiot. Don't back out. Don't, you know. Right. right. It wouldn't surprise me if there was some sort of student trip bundle too, just for like the all the touristy sites, like the museums, the Eiffel Tower, like all the different things at like a discounted rate specifically for students. Yes. Yeah. We do know that they didn't book tickets for the elevator. Right. We, we do know that. <laughs> Poor souls. So they saved a little cost cutting measure there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So Charlie gets the form back. And immediately is like, there's actually something else I need to talk to you about. <laughs> I personally would have turned it in first and then come back and talk to her about this. But you know what? You do you, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or at least got it out the room so she can't literally just snatch, snatch it. Yeah. it out your hand <laughs> and throw it in the trash and pour some spaghetti sauce over it or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they're like, you know, his parents are like, we're listening. And Julio tries to crack a dad joke. <laughs> Like, are you trying to come out again? Because you already told us last year. <laughs> Which is adorable. Charlie's blushing so hard. Yeah. When Julio says that line, Jane, like, looks over at him, like, kind of nervously, like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Charlie's, like, super embarrassed. And he's like, I, I have a boyfriend. And they're, like, excited for him. Yeah, Jane looks genuinely pleased. Yeah. Charlie is nervous to tell them who it is, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he says that it's nick okay i just noticed this i missed this uh in all of my subsequent readings or at the very least i didn't take note of it um but <laughs> julio chokes on his coffee <laughs> yeah he fully chokes <laughs> i love it and then jane says some stupid shit <laughs> oh well yeah she's jane she's like well i suppose <laughs> we didn't think he was he's a very sporty laddish sort of boy <laughs> Yes. And, that's... and this is the first change that we noticed because on top of us, it says, well, he's a bit of a jock, isn't he? Um, but in both of the printed versions, it has the laddish line. And I think that that's the better line of the It two. is a better line. Yes. It's also what they say in the show, right? Yeah. It's also just, I'm like... Way to perpetuate the stereotypes, Jane. <laughs> way, to be, way to be the problem. <laughs> Listen, everybody's got to learn... Everybody's going to learn on their own time. Mm -hmm. um, and then Charlie's like, being gay has nothing to do with that. And for what it's worth, he's actually bisexual. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think is the first I'm bi, actually, of the comics. Which means yes. that Charlie's actually the first one to say it, not Nick. Yeah. Although, as we all know, Nick will say it several times. <laughs> Many times, yes. Mm -hmm. To Jane's credit, she does acknowledge that she was wrong. Yeah. She says we shouldn't have assumed. And Julio says, we're just happy that you're happy. And he's beaming. Yeah, this panel of Charlie's on my contender list for favorite panel because he's it's... got like the little stars floating around him. And he's got the like, not the anxiety background, but definitely the like nervous, blotchy background. And he's like blushing and smiling, like fucking beaming. And mm -hmm. it is adorable. It really is. Um, and then Julio asks if Nick is out. Charlie explains that he came out to his to his mom last weekend. And then we get a little flashback. Yes. And I like genuinely forgot that this happens like this in the comics too. Yeah. Right? Because it goes to three days earlier and we get Nick putting his hands over Charlie's eyes. And I was like, oh my God, it's from the comics. I didn't realize that I'm crying. Yeah. <laughs> and he tells them, and I do, gentlemen, you are by the lockers. This is a public space. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is risky, risky business. Yeah. You <laughs> and like obviously, like this conversation, like if there's no one around, it's fine. But then y'all start making out up against the lockers. And there's a loud slam too, which yeah. like will draw attention. And like, these aren't, like, floor to ceiling. Like, there's space mm -hmm. um, in between the tops of the lockers and the ceiling. So, like, that's, like, the sound of your conversation and of you slamming yes. against the lockers and making out is going to travel. And people are going to hear you. Mm -hmm. I I mean, like, to be fair, I guess these are, like, rooms that are, like, not part of the hallways. But, like, people go to their lockers. 
Mm -hmm. (laughs) It might be part of the main hallway. It depends on the layout of the rest of it. Because like in my high school, we had sections like corridor sections where we had rows of lockers Mm. like this. But like it wasn't a like standalone place. You had like people were constantly walking around. It was surrounded by classrooms like Mm. so it was like kind of it was out in the open, but it was like just like two or three rows of lockers. And then the next corridor would have two or three rows of lockers. Mm. Yeah, no, we we had the like kind of like stereotypical high school, like where it's the like rows of lockers all like in between the classrooms and stuff. Yeah. I mean, people would make out up against those all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but usually those but people were care. <laughs> keeping their relationship a secret um, yeah. and trying to navigate coming out as bisexual yeah i also love that uh when nick shows up and puts his hands over charlie's eyes he says nick is that you (laughs) and i just wrote down no charlie it's tau in an uncharacteristically playful mood (laughs) like (laughs) who else is gonna walk up and put their hands over your eyes i feel like there is a version of tau that would do something like that but not (laughs) at this point in the comics right like not it's yet. definitely like the post getting together with L Tao that would do yes, shit like that. For sure. But yeah, so uh Nick says that it went really well, and then they make out at the lockers. And then I mean they at least acknowledge that they should yeah. not be doing this. Kissing at school is a terrible idea. We're gonna get caught one day. And then <laughs> and then Jane pulls Charlie back to reality. Yeah, he got a little lost in the sauce there. Mm-hmm. And Tori appears, as she is wont to do. Yes. And uh, cracks a little <laughs> joke. <laughs> Immediately starts ribbing him. Right, he told you about Nick then. You won't be grandchildless after all. And Charlie has a little bit of a stroke. Yeah, he's got like sweat. <laughs> he's like, face. who said anything about grandchildren? What are you talking about? <laughs> Which leads Julio to add to it and be like, oh yeah, Nick is definitely banned from sleepovers now. Which rocks Charlie's world. He's like, he's like indignant. <laughs> Like my guy, you didn't you didn't put you, you didn't figure this out immediately. Uh, and Julio uh insisting that there will be no hanky panky in this house. Yes. Tori disgusted by the term hanky panky. Charlie's like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. He's like getting out yeah. as quick as possible. His face is so red. Yep. Julio's like, bedroom door open at all times. No hanky panky until you're married. And Tori's like, stop saying hanky panky. Which I think there's like a side conversation away from the comic and more about like society and this like pressure on teens to like either have sex or not have sex, depending on which part of the media you're looking at. And like, yeah, there's a whole discussion to be had about these lines separately. But yeah, I mean, like, so here's my thing. Right. I feel like most parents, at the very least, don't want it happening in their house. Right. Right. I feel like and this is something that my dad said to me at one point, and I I don't necessarily like 100 percent agree, but I don't 100 percent disagree of like as a parent not wanting to create situations in which things can happen. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, I get it. You know, I do. Yeah. But I also, I feel like a bigger part of it is, like, what other conversations have the Springs had with their kids about sex and safe sex. Yeah, it's specifically the until you're married line that gets me. Yeah. So here's the thing. That is, like, very, like, dad humor, though. And, like... For sure. Which is why I said, like, it's, like, a separate from the comic issue because that absolutely fucking tracks for like Mm -hmm. the age group like everything like of course his dad's saying that i'm just complaining about society (laughs) yeah well so no but that's why i'm saying it it, like it's very context dependent because if it is in the context of like a family who are very open and have had conversations about sex and safe sex and all of these things then this it is like joke. it's like a funny like yeah. funny joke but if you are like raised in purity culture and yeah or if you're kind of like in a family where it's just like super taboo don't talk about it right then this has a whole different meaning 
For yeah. Sure. So it's it's very context dependent and I mean like to be honest, I get the feeling from the springs that they're kind of like a don't talk about don't, it. <laughs> don't talk about it kind of yeah, family. For sure. But it is it is also kind of funny. It's I think the fact that he's saying hanky panky really softens the blow. It really does. Yeah. And like really leans into the this is dad humor trying to embarrass his children. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to it being like super like sex shamey and stuff like that. Right, yeah, for sure. My favorite part about this scene in the show is when Jane is when he looks at Jane at the end like what? And she's like, No, mm -mm, no. Like <laughs> don't, I've had enough as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> which is fair <laughs> so then we we jump to the beginning of the school day nick and charlie have united outside of truum and charlie is recapping how the morning went uh, and we get they were fine about it but i think you're banned from sleepovers what think? <laughs> <laughs> i do love though that like they like nick gets super uncomfortable about it oh, too yeah. like they're so clearly not there at this point in the comics. By the end of this volume, they're getting there. Yeah. But they're clearly not there yet. And he's like, it's not like we'd do anything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and very quickly changes the subject to exams. They're definitely not there. But I will say that the comic versions of them, they're a lot more like risque with their texts and stuff than they yes. are in the show. Yes. Like, they're definitely a lot more like sexually flirty mm -hmm. in the comic leading up to it. So, yes, I, I do think it's also it's like a lot more like in texts where I feel like, yes, you can feel it's a easier. bit more bold. Yeah, it's, it's easier. easier to be bold when you're behind the screen for sure. And when you can edit your comments before you send them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, so Nick immediately changes the subjects to exams, which will kill the mood very mm -hmm, quickly. Mm -hmm. And we get the, um, like, nervous background behind them. I love the backgrounds when they get yeah. like, nervous or anxious. Like, that's such an effective way to show that. Like, everything falls mm -hmm. away. Just thank you, Alice, for your service. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, Charlie's got an English exam. And then we get this little, like, montage of exams and kissing mm -hmm. <laughs> and studying. So Charlie's taking an exam. Uh, Nick and Charlie are about to kiss while they're supposed to be studying. Yeah, Charlie's, like, in Nick's lap. Yeah. Uh, Nick is taking his French exam, which, Nick, you're fluent in French. Not that we were supposed to know that yet. Easy exam. Although, okay, I actually know some people. I, I didn't take French. I took Spanish. But I knew some people who were fluent in spanish mm -hmm. who like would still get stressed out about exams because like sometimes if like the ver like the like phrasing that you're being taught and stuff is different than the spanish you grew up like the dialect that you grew up speaking like that can be difficult uh -huh. and then also just some people are just not good test takers and they're like yeah i'm also fluent in english but i suck at those tests too right yeah, test anxiety is real and they're studying in the park for GCSE chemistry. And Nelly. we have a Nelly appearance. She is just kind of vibing. She's sniffing. And then we have a bunch of people leaving uh, an exam. And Charlie is not happy. No. <laughs> He's, like, <laughs> He's like whining. And then Nick in an exam thinking. Chewing on his pen. And then we cut to June, and they're texting. Charlie asks how Nick's chemistry exam was. Nick says it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Asks if Charlie can come over. But Charlie is at a biology revision session and also needs hugs. Mm -hmm. Nick tells him to sneak out and go home with Nick. <laughs> This is where we get some of that flirting we were just talking yes. about. Charlie says, Saws, I love energy flow and plant growth more than you. And Nick says, I have some ideas for things we could do involving energy flow. <laughs> and it's like, it's spicy, but it's also so corny at the and same nerdy, time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is another contender for favorite panel. This little Nick with like 
the blush and the hearts and the and like the smiles and like his little like shoulders yeah and he's got he's like hugging his phone giggling <laughs> it's so cute it just that face makes me happy <laughs> yes it does it it's great and then Cy Christian and Otis come over and his face immediately gets so tense mm-hmm. and he is not happy no I'm like, honestly, at this point, rightfully so. Right. Uh, because the last time that they like hung out was at the movies when Harry was being a dick. Mm-hmm. But they do like they're they're making this like concerted effort to apologize. Uh, and I love that they very clearly had no plan other than we need to apologize. Right. He says, I have nothing to say to you. And then Sai says, we know, mate, and you don't have to. Can you just hear us out? And this panel of Nick's face looking like anguished, Mm -hmm. like he's so hurt. And it's like such a contrast from the other one that I just said was like a contender for my favorite. And then this one immediately after hurts so much. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's like this conflict of like, what do I do? Like, and I am glad that he does he does agree to hear them out and i'm like you know what i think that i feel like that's often the best case because you can hear them out and then you can still decide to tell them to fuck off right yeah you know like hearing them out doesn't like lock you into anything i've definitely done that before where i've like heard someone out and been like no yeah no (laughs) yeah i'm like yeah you just said that to make yourself feel better fuck off (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but yeah, they they genuinely seem apologetic, uh, as, especially because this is so chaotic. <laughs> yeah, the panels, the way that they're like overlapping each other, like mm-hmm. Christian, Otis, Sai, like you can tell that they're like talking over each other. Christian says, "We're sorry. We should have stopped it and told Harry to fuck off." And then Otis says, "Not even just at the cinema. We should have done it ages ago." And Sai says. And I know we should have been better when Harry was picking on Charlie, but we can promise we'll be better friends from now on. Seriously. And we get this, like, profile shot of Nick, like, taking it all in. Mm Mm-hmm. And then Christian says, and we really like Charlie. He's a nice guy, and I don't want him to think that we're like Harry, which is a valid concern. It is, yeah, because Harry's a dick, and they're not like him. Mm -hmm. But they also are teenage boys. Actually, I don't think that this is a teenage boy specific thing. I think that this is a teenage Teenage specific thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. They're also teenagers and they want their friends, like they want the approval of their friends. And Harry is very much like a, like dominating figure in their group. And is Harry Green Regina George? I don't think he's cool enough to be Regina George. but (laughs) But like in the context of this. Yeah. I feel like absolutely. Yeah. Um, maybe he just needs to get hit by a bus. Maybe that'll solve all of our problems. <laughs> um Ben needs to get yeeted off the Eiffel Tower yes. and Harry needs to get hit by a bus non <laughs> non-lethally. <laughs> uh, I actually I love this uh kind of like this like panel that takes up two thirds of the page of like yeah. Nick looking kind of forlorn and like reminiscing on these like happy moments with the guys. Because it's very much this, like, persp- like putting things into perspective of, like, yeah, they're not like Harry. And, like, just because they didn't do anything. Like, I feel like if Nick, I mean, obviously we don't have any textual evidence of this, but I have to imagine Nick kind of, like, putting himself into their shoes in that moment. And if this were happening to someone else. Right. Like, he probably wouldn't have said anything either. Like, he... Mm-hmm. I'm like, he kind of owns up to, I can't remember, like, in, I think it was in the last volume, like, he owns up to the fact that the rugby lads would say shit about Charlie before Nick knew him, and he didn't say anything. Yeah. He didn't do anything. So, like, Nick's been there, too. And I mean, like, the bystander effect is real, especially in high school. Yes. Like, especially when it's, like, you know, you're running the risk of being, like, cast out of, like, your friend group at a time where your friends are your whole universe. Right. Doesn't excuse it, but I think I think that like for Nick, this is kind of like putting it into perspective and kind of giving him that chance to like reflect and think about it. Yeah. And he says, Thanks for saying that. I know you're not like Harry, and I'm glad you finally want to ditch him. 
And then he says, uh, apology accepted. And he looks so hopeful. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe things can be okay. Um, yeah. And I'll give him like a little like bro hug, pat on the back. <laughs> and he looks so happy. He's yeah. Like, oh, friends. It's like a piece of his life that he felt was falling apart is kind of late, is finally like falling back into place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Sai asks if Harry has been bothering either of them. Nick explains that they haven't really seen him because of exams and study leave. And Christian, <laughs> I love Christian. Is Christian my favorite of these idiots? <laughs> Possibly. Probably. He's just so dopey. He's got no filter in yeah. like the cutest, like most innocent way possible. Right. Right. Yeah. I seriously don't blame you for punching him. I know you and Charlie are really good mates. Oh my God. <laughs> Cy and Otis's faces crack me up. Otis is seriously like, we talked about this. Cy's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just like, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Cy's just like, Jesus Christ. Otis. Like, it's, I think it's because you can see, like, Otis's, like, hands. Like, he's, like, pressing his hands yeah, like, together. Ugh. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the only plan was we are going to apologize and we're not going to tell Nick that we know. Right. <laughs> Christian has to go fuck it up. <laughs> and then we get this. This panel is also, like, one of my contenders for favorites of, Same. you know, his, like, internal repeating really good mates over and over and over again, just with the, you know, several different panels of him and Charlie kissing. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he short circuits. He's like, like, get me <laughs> out of here and says he's got to catch his bus and he'll see them later. I also really love this panel. Yeah, the, the boys bottom. are mad. They're like, <laughs> uh, Christian's like, bug eyed, like, what did I do? <laughs> Sai and Otis are like, you know what you did. Yeah. Why did you have to say good mates? He might have told us. And he's like, what was I supposed to say? Hi, Nick. We know you and Charlie are a thing, and that's fine. And Sai's like, definitely not that. <laughs> it's like fair because I do think that if they, said that like nick probably would have shut down just because he's still navigating this whole coming out thing right but yeah i'm sure i'm sure that if they had talked about it more and come up with a plan maybe they would have yeah. been able to figure out something so that christian didn't just vomit the first thing that came to mind so then we get this um we get this like little wrap up down here of nick texting charlie saying you could come over for dinner tonight. And Charlie's saying, I can't. I've got to revise for this biology exam. And he says, no. Also, how have we managed to go out for this long and you still haven't come around mine for dinner? And Charlie, like, laughs it off. He's like, ha, 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 I decay. But we get this shot of Nick, like, contemplating mm -hmm. all of this and, like, processing it. And he looks extremely worried, which is, like, setting us up for pretty much the rest of their journey through this volume. Yeah. Between the rugby lads talking about their relationship and mm -hmm. this text talking about Charlie not coming around for dinner. That's like the perfect setup for everything we're about to go through. Yep. And then we go to one week later at rugby practice, which I feel like part of me is like, dude, you, you haven't talked about this. It's been a week and you haven't talked about it. Uh -huh. But I'm also like, I guess. I get that they've been busy with like study leave and stuff. And like, we've definitely seen like they haven't really been able to like be together. And this isn't really a conversation you'd want to have over text. Right. But he's like, I still couldn't come out to them. And Charlie's so sweet. He says, There's no deadline. And Nick says, I know, but it's annoying when people think we're like, and Charlie says, best platonic bros. And he's got like um, a cocky smirk. <laughs> yeah. Nick's like, oh my god, he does not like that. <laughs> and it's like definitely like they definitely just talked about the really good mates thing. And so it's yeah. like <laughs> yeah. this extra little like dig. Right. And the, the this whole time they're like gathering all of the equipment and they're putting, they're like kind of like putting it in a bag. And so they start heading into the equipment shed. And Charlie says, I'm not sure I could handle us being fully out right now anyway. And it's very clearly the first time that this has come up. Yeah, Nick is taken aback for sure. Yeah, he's like, what? Because that's like what they've been talking about up until this point is like yeah. starting to come out to the people that are closest to them. And like not even being fully out. Just to their circle. Just to their circle. 
And he says, well, I've sort of been stressed out because of exams and being fully out as a couple. Everyone talking about us. I think that would finish me off. Ha ha. Mm -hmm. And I really love Charlie's back is to Nick and to us the whole time that he's saying this. But like you can just tell from like his body language that he's just like shrinking and shrinking in on himself. Yeah. And like tensing up. Mm -hmm. And Nick is concerned. Yeah. And he tries to talk about it more and get Charlie to open up. But Charlie, like, immediately shuts it down and says it's just exam stress um, to just forget it. And Nick, with his love language of touch, just immediately grabs him and kisses him. Mm -hmm. And this is another, like, effective thing, right? Like, when he grabs him and starts to kiss him, we get the, like blotchy background but then the longer Mm -hmm. he kisses the more the background comes back Mm -hmm. which is just like chef's kiss (laughs) yeah Uh, nick tries to like encourage charlie to open up charlie just asks if nick can kiss him more he says i can always do that (laughs) yeah he kisses him on the mouth and on the forehead no and it's then we get the little panel from the outside with the little Ooh. with the leg coming up. And you're like, oh no, oh no, oh no. Coach Singh comes around the corner trying to figure out how long it takes away to put away some balls. I love this like panel in the middle here. Of yes. The two of them realizing what happened and like the glass shattering all around yes. them. You can like hear the record scratch. Uh-huh. Yeah. I also love the panel under it where we see their feet with the like little swooshes showing that they move. They've moved to complete opposite sides of the shed. Yeah, like, yeah, yep. as far away from each other as possible. Mm-hmm. And Coach Singh is just like, just hurry up. Like she doesn't ask any. She's just like, I don't get paid enough for this. Yeah, I need to lock <laughs> up, wrap this shit up. And so they do, and they acknowledge it was bound to happen at some point. I do like that we get this, like, shot of them, like, laughing about it and, like, being embarrassed because in the show, they just, like, cut straight away from it. Yeah. (laughs) And it's, like, we don't get to see how they handled that in that moment, but this is very cute of them being, like, embarrassed. Charlie's, like, covering his face and Nick, like, puts his arm around him and they're clearly, like, having giggle fits about it. Mm -hmm. So they walk back into the PE department and we hear Coach Singh say... Nick, can I see you in my office, please? And he is nervous. <laughs> yeah. I love this. This is something I quite enjoy doing as a teacher as well, <laughs> of, like, making kids who are not in trouble and are about to receive good news sweat a little bit. Yeah. Um, especially when they kind of deserve it. <laughs> like, because they did something stupid, like, make out with their boyfriend in the equipment shed. Um, But... Like, the kind of, like, calling him over and just, like, the kind of, like, very, like, flat, like, take a seat, just, like, without any kind of, like, expression. Let him sweat a bit. Yeah. And we also get her, like, nameplate, which says Mrs. Singh Stevens. Yeah. Which I don't think we ever, we've ever seen before. Mm -mm. I've never noticed that until this Mm -hmm. this read-through and I was looking at all the details and I was like, oh, she has a hyphenated name. And then she tells him that he's the new rugby captain. He is shocked. Yes. And describes him as the heart and center of this team and says, you have the talent to pursue rugby beyond school if you want to. Um, And Nick is just like completely taken aback. He's got like little hard eyes. He's like, oh, yeah. Like what? Really? So cute. It's also I feel like the rugby has like really taken a backseat in the show. Like they when they have this conversation in the show, like he's not like she doesn't name him captain. He's already just. Is he? Yeah, she's like, I made you captain last year right. because you could bring all these people together. And now I can tell that right. something's wrong. And I think mm-hmm. that this has something to do with it. Yeah. Gotcha. So they like move the captaincy up. Yeah. The that makes sense. I just, I love this. I love these like little interactions with the mm-hmm. teachers. Um, Like Charlie has some with Mr. Lang later. They're just really cute. Uh, but then she goes, I'd also recommend finding somewhere a little more discreet to make out with your boyfriend. And Nick's <laughs> face goes red. Because you know that he got like all caught up in the rugby of this and completely forgot about the fact that she just caught him making caught out. Them. He was like, oh, I'm, ma- I'm being made captain. And then she's like, and by the way. 
<laughs> it's very much a compliment sandwich. Yeah. It's very much something good. Here's your correction. And then kind of like swerving it back to a related but still something good kind of thing. Right. She says, I'm glad Charlie's settled into the team. I've been keeping an eye on him. I know he's been a target of some pretty severe bullying in the past. If I hear you've done anything to hurt him, we'll be having words. All right. And I'm just like, Coach Singh, you might have to get in line behind Tao. <laughs> so true. I love that she's like still like she knows that Nick is a good guy from just like coaching him. But like just in case he's being influenced by his peers, she's putting down her foot like, and by the way, I will fuck you up over Charlie. <laughs> yeah. It's like how, you know, lots of people in their wedding speeches are like, and also if you hurt my yes. loved one, I will fuck you up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then she does add in. And if any of the other boys do or say anything spiteful to you or Charlie, you just come straight to me, okay? I'll sort them out. And Nick says, yeah, yeah, I will. And I feel like if this happened a little bit sooner, he might have mentioned the stuff with Harry. Mm -hmm. Or if he hadn't just had, like, a conversation with Cy Christian and Otis right. about it. Yeah. I feel like he might have brought it up. But but for now, he just kind of lets it, lets it be. And then she kind of like it looks like she like turns the photo a little bit towards him maybe yeah and says i met my wife playing university sport in the early noughties and you see him like oh, mine says in the early aughts oh so yep there's another difference i know that's like a british versus american thing mm -hmm. like the knots versus the aughts i personally would like to recommend my 10th grade history teacher uh, would jokingly refer to them as the zeros and i kind of <laughs> like that <laughs> want to bring that back um <laughs> but nick is shocked mm -hmm. like we get the little like four headlines like whoop, like what she says people gave us a lot of shit things are a little better now but you never know well if you want to chat about anything you know where to find me captain nelson and like very happy again so again Back to my compliment sandwich theory. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> compliment, correction, compliment. Um, he says, thanks. And he's just so happy. And she tells him to have a good summer holiday. He says, you too. And she's like looking at the photo. I like, know, smiling. she picks it up. So cute. It's so cute. And then she immediately calls her wife. I don't get that. I don't have that. I just have a panel of her smiling at the photo and then some leaves. Oh, they cut this out of the book. For for the listeners at home, I'm literally holding my copy of the book up to my webcam. <laughs> yeah, they totally cut it out of the print. Okay, well, it, on top of us, there is another panel, two panels, one of her tap, tap, tapping, and then mm. another one of her on the phone. And it says, hey, babe, I missed you today. Ha ha, yeah, I'll be home soon. So she immediately calls her wife to like... Probably just hear her voice and, like, be nostalgic about everything that just happened. Yeah. And then it cuts to the other panels. So that's interesting mm -hmm. that they cut that out of the print. Yeah. I wonder the reasoning of that. So then we have Nick, like, coming into the locker room and Charlie asking, like, what happened. And Nick goes to want to tell him, but then remembers what Charlie said and says he'll tell him later. And he ruffles his hair. Yeah, very cute. Mm -hmm. They're riding the bus and they say goodbye and he's still not told him. Yeah. Which, like, I guess you don't... If he's worried about anything, the locker room's, like, not a, a private space. And then the bus yeah. is also a public space. So, like, mm -hmm. I can see why he waited. Yeah. Um. So then he... Nick arrives home and Ugh. someone says nicholas so we know it's not sarah because sarah does not call him nicholas right and we also know it's not sarah because he looks like he's seen a ghost yeah he is not happy i love also it's like not even blurry like the background is like fully, fully like black. solid yeah yeah and we turn the page and we find david this smug looking motherfucker <laughs> And he says, all right, Nikki, at the same time that Sarah's saying, Nick, your brother's home from uni. And I love the panels underneath it. We get at the like lines that are like, they're first of all, they're different colors showing mm -hmm. like the di the different depths of his feelings. Mm -hmm. And then also we get this like 
they're not really shattered so much as like broken broken like broken yeah. up little bits of panel and then they come back solid before we see the next morning yeah but like he's like also clearly not back to 100 percent. yeah no absolutely not they're not light enough to be 100 percent, and they're not long enough i love also that they're still like little small bits yeah and like even just like his body language like he goes to sit down he's like slumped yeah over he looks exhausted yeah and charlie immediately notices and asks if he's okay and he just says late night and like you can see the like bags under his eyes yeah and he explains that his brother's home and being shitty says he doesn't want to talk about it but he cuddles into charlie's uh side and i'm like (laughs) you are in class (laughs) gentlemen everybody can see and then um, so Charlie says, well, I had something I wanted to ask you. He says, you know, we've got the meeting about the Paris trip tonight. Well, Tal, Alid, and Elle are going to be there. And he like leans in <laughs> in a very, very heterosexual way. Yeah, says, this is a full cuddle. Yeah. He like whispers into his ear and we could tell them about us if you want. Nick's little face. Like, like surprised. And excited. Yeah. Yeah. And says, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Are you sure you want to? I love, I love that, like, it's all, like, whispered. And it says whisper. And there's, like, the broken liner on yeah. the speech bubble. I think that's really cool. Yes. And he says, yeah, I mean, it's just my friends. They'll be cool about it. And it's like, yeah, like, these are definitely safe people. In a way that, like, I feel like Nick even wanting to tell Cy Christian and Otis, like, mm, it's not as, like, definitely safe. Right, for sure. And then Charlie glances, and he, like, seems to remember that they're in class. <laughs> and he, like, glances around and then kind of pulls apart from Nick. Puts yeah. some space in between them. Again, Nick tries to talk about what Charlie said yesterday. And Charlie brushes it off and is like, don't worry about it. Yeah. But yeah, so then we get some leaves and we also get the, like, diminished, like, breaking yeah. boxes interspersed with the leaves yeah and neither one of them look happy like they both charlie looks miserable and like embarrassed almost like that it's come up again and nick Mm -hmm. just looks so worried he's like looking over at charlie who is refusing Mm -hmm. to look at him at this point Mm -hmm. so then we jump to the information evening for parents and students uh what if You expect the information evening to be before you have to sign the permission forms? Right, yeah. You would think that you would come to this meeting, get all the information, and take the forms home to, like, sign and fill out. Or, like, even just, like, sign and hand in there, like, if you're, like, Mm -hmm. set on it. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. But I guess also, like, in terms of, like, crowd control, like, having all of the people. Because they also, they do, like, the room assignments and stuff. So, like, That's from, like, true. a logistical standpoint, like, I wonder if maybe they had, like, a pre-meeting where they were, like, here's the trip. Here's what we're going to do here. Much is how it's, here's mm-hmm. how much it's going to cost. Here's going to be the, like, expectations and, su- and yeah. you know, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the, like, confirmed people going, let's mm-hmm. talk more in depth about it. That makes sense. Yeah. Like, logistics. So, they arrive and... The kids, like, sit together and the parents sit together, like... Yeah. Also, it's interesting in this shot... Well, okay, so first of all, we see them, like, walking up and Charlie's with Julio and it doesn't look like Jane is there. And Nick is with Sarah and Julio's like, go find your friends, we'll be over here. And then we see them find Alad and Tao and they go over and they have this chat about how they've not seen each other. They've been in exams and it's ruining their lives and all that stuff Mm -hmm. and then the girls show up and what i find interesting is that we see tara's mom and dad Mm -hmm. and we don't know anything about her dad in the show right like we only hear her and see her mom yeah um so i think that's interesting just to be like oh i didn't realize that her dad was in the comic but yeah and then we have just Elle's mom and darcy's there by herself which speaks volumes in and of itself, yeah. Um, they're chatty. I love that Tara's fully sitting in Darcy's lap. Mm-hmm. I also love her outfit. Yes, very cute. Like, off the shoulder top with the skirt. Mm-hmm. I love awkward Tao and Elle who haven't acknowledged that they're madly in love with each other yet. <laughs> Just their little blushy faces. Mm-hmm. I like this shot, too, of the group that we get, like, from above. Like, an aerial shot. 
of the group. Yeah, of them, like, all chatting at the table. Yeah, it's cute. That's a cute way to do, like, the group shot. Mm Mm-hmm. Tao and Elle continue to be awkward. Mm-hmm. Nick leans over and is like, have they kissed yet? Charlie's like, I don't think so. Nick's like, they really need to. <laughs> Speaking from experience, Nick. <laughs> and it's almost like, did they hear that? Because like, then we jump back to Tao and Elle. And like, Talik looks up at her. And then like, looks back. And she's looking at him. It's so cute. It's, so it's cute. very cute. And then they're like, do you think now's the right time to tell them about us? Uh, maybe it would encourage them to actually deal with their feelings. <laughs> Feisty. Darcy inserts herself into the yeah. picture and says, what are you whispering about and can I be involved? I actually really love the way, like, I said that, like, Darcy inserts herself into the picture, like, jokingly, but she, like, literally does, like, yeah. poke her, like, from the bottom of the frame. And then it, like, shifts over and we see them, like, talking to Tara and Darcy, like, explaining that they're trying to figure out you know, how to tell Charlie's friends about them. Yeah. And Darcy says, just say it. It's not like they'll react badly. Charlie says, well, no, but and I really want to know what he was going to say after that. Yeah. Because it does, uh, he does get interrupted by the teachers. Yeah. We've got a lot of information to get through this evening and they've got like a, like a projector with, the, it says itinerary. Mm-hmm. And they like introduce themselves. Mr. Jai, I teach art at Higgs. And I'm Mr. Farouk. I teach physics at, at Trillum. I always mix them up. I always mix up the school that they're at. I feel like I'm yeah. never going to get it right. <laughs> I I feel like the show has not helped matters by making no. them just both work at yeah. Trillum. Yeah. Um, they say that they'll be supervising the Paris trip. And Nick and Charlie are like, we'll talk to them after. And I love the leaves being like, you don't need all this information. But what you do need to know is that the rooms will be shared by groups of four and there will not be any mingling between boys and girls. <laughs> Groan <laughs> across the crowd. <laughs> Says, I know, I know, but it is not appropriate for couples to be sharing rooms. Cut to... <laughs> the gays. The gays snuggling and smiling and, like, glancing furtively yeah. at each other, like, ha ha tee hee. <laughs> One time comp het works in our favor. Yeah. <laughs> they say, now we need one person from each group to come up to the front and write down your names. And we get this panel of them, the girls, like, reaching out and inviting Sahar to, like, come over and be in their group. Mm-hmm. Which is cute. And I had forgotten about. For some reason in my brain, I was thinking she just got, like, auto-selected because they were a group of three. So, like, we're filling this slot with Sahar. But they actively choose to invite her into their group, which I had not realized. But we love. Yes, absolutely. And this is where we get like a change from the Mm -hmm. show because this is not how Charlie finds out this information in the show. Well, also because at this point also Tao knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just like specifically, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad that they changed it around because I don't love this yeah but i do wish that in the show that we had given charlie like a little more time to process it on screen you know before he was just like "Eh." but i think it it tracks that he would immediately comfort tau in that situation on the show like this this version makes my tummy hurt a lot more than the show version you know (laughs) yeah i do love that l and tau have been nominated to go put down their names for the group. Uh, that seems like it might have been calculated. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. And so Charlie, Nick, and Alan are left at the table. And Alan's just doodling away, which I think is precious. So Charlie is like, hey, Alan, we kind of wanted to talk to you about something. And he's like, you have my attention? Yeah, his little question mark. Can you say more? <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie says, well, I guess this is a bit random, but... We wanted to let you know that uh, we're going out. Me and Nick. Like, we're dating. <laughs> and I love Alan's like, yeah. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> and that, like, shakes them. They're like, what? You? What do you mean you thought so? As if they weren't just fucking cuddling in the fucking form room earlier. <laughs> Alan is all of us. <laughs> yeah. I love that he, like, leans in and puts his, like, head in his hands. Like, when he says that line, he's like, um. (laughs) My note is, do they even know the meaning of the word subtle? No, they don't. I was like, Elle knows too. I think we worked it out when we all went bowling. 
but don't tell Tao yet. And that's like a record scratch moment. Yeah. I also, I like that it like jumps to this like wide shot where like we have Alad from the back and then yeah. Nick and Charlie and like the whole crowd. Yeah. Like the chaos of everything behind them. Charlie asks why and Alad explains that he might have been the reason that Charlie got outed. Um, He says it was an accident. We were just chatting in the corridor. He was saying how happy he was that you decided to tell us, but someone might have overheard. He would never tell Never, ever tell anyone deliberately, but he's loud and chatty and can't keep secrets. And we get this panel of, like, the bullies, like, their little eyeless faces Mm -hmm. with their evil grins. Well, before that, we get this panel of Charlie, and it's, like, all black. Yeah. And just, like, lines of anxiety emanating off of him. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, Alad says, don't tell him right before the Paris trip. And Charlie is just... Deflated. Completely. And then, of course... That is exactly when Tao shows back up. Uh-huh. All done. He's like, so excited. Ready for this. <laughs> completely, <laughs> completely clueless. Um, and he's like, I got us some itineraries. And is like being helpful. And Charlie is just like at a loss. Yeah. And Nick's like trying to comfort him and like trying to like work out a, a new plan. But Charlie's not having it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nick sends a bunch of texts. Are you sure you don't want to tell Tao? If we specifically told him he ha- it has to be a secret, I'm sure he'd be able to keep his mouth shut. I'm not sure if you've known Tao long enough to be able to make a judgment right. like that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we don't have to tell him if you don't want to, though. I just don't want to be the cause of you falling out with your friends. Charlie, you awake? And that I don't want you to be the cause of you falling out with your friends, like, really hits, especially after, like, he's, like, just reconnected with the rugby lads. Yeah. So we see that Nick sent those messages Friday, June 11th, 11.02, and Charlie doesn't respond until Saturday, June 12th, 10.43. Mm-hmm. So it's been a while. And so Charlie says, sorry, I had a family thing last night. I don't know what to do. Can we not talk about it right now? And Nick says, that's fine. I just don't want you to feel stressed. And Charlie responds with some hearts. Nick asks if he wants to come over today or tomorrow. And Charlie says, I can't. Busy weekend doing family stuff. And I am starting to question whether or not there is actually family stuff going on. As someone who has definitely used that as a vague excuse to get out of doing shit. I definitely don't think that there was anything family related last night when he said that in the text. I think he went home and and like had an anxiety spiral. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some drumming. Yeah. A lot of bedtime, though. Yes. Um, How about Monday after school? Now I'm not at school. I'm going to miss my daily dose of Charlie. And then Charlie says, it's so unfair. Year 11, get their summer holiday early. I'll come over on Monday. <laughs> I forgot. I always forget this. He says, yay, <laughs> I can finally make you watch Iron Man. And also we can make out a lot. Charlie says, I am excited about one of those two activities. <laughs> and I would just like to say, Charlie, Iron Man is one of the genuinely good Marvel movies. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> Give it a shot. So then we go back to Monday after school. Nick is in bed with Nellie, scrolling. Doorbell rings. Yeah. And he is up and at the door. Yep. And Charlie's not looking the best. And he no. says, are you? Oh, and he, as he starts to say, okay, Charlie throws himself on Nick's shoulder. I very much enjoy the word choice of wump. Yeah, wump. <laughs> Charlie says, school sucks without you. I like there's part of me that's like well what happened like mm-hmm. what bad thing happened like I like this can't just be that you miss him like something must have happened yeah <laughs> but then N- Nick says I'd say I'm sad but honestly not being at school is great <laughs> I love Charlie's face in this one with the like hey, hey, yeah. the, like whiny face <laughs> mm-hmm. Nick picks him up swings him around and says come on let's go new- let's go do nothing it's so cute And then they do. Yep. They go do nothing. And (sighs) Nellie is hanging out with Charlie. And Nick is smitten as fuck watching Charlie and Nellie. Uh Huh? So then Charlie comes over and like snuggles up to Nick on his beanbag. And Nick tries to ask, "Um, are you annoyed at Tao? And Charlie says, no, it's not his fault. He's one of my best friends. He would never have done it deliberately. Um, and then Nick says, I still don't really get how people found out though. And Charlie says, like Alan said, he just spoke about it too loudly and words spread around. Like, how did you find out I'm gay? 
He says, I don't know. I guess someone just told me. And Charlie's like, point made. At the time, there weren't any other out gay kids in school. So it was most it was the most exciting news of the week. People either thought I was a novelty or I was just gross. It it really surprised me how many people are still homophobic. They tell me I was disgusting right to my face. It got better. And after a few months and some older boys got the worst bullies to stop. And then it was like everyone started waking up and realizing that I was a real person with real feelings. But the damage had already been done, I guess. And it hurts. And not that it matters too much, but another difference I noticed while you were reading that out is mine says specifically that after a few months, some sixth formers got the worst bullies to stop, Mm. which is probably just another Americanization of it. Yeah. But I go back and forth about the placement of this discussion comic versus show yeah because like we said when we covered perfect like there's not a there's not a good time to have this discussion like there's no perfect time to have this talk but i do kind of like this almost more organically coming up rather than Mm -hmm. nick planning it but i also really like the outcome of it in the show as well so i don't know that i like prefer one or the other but i just appreciate the differences i guess Mm -hmm. And then we get to the part that I always forget about and don't want to talk about, but I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. Nick's like, this is why you have been so stressed. And Charlie says, yeah, the bullying was, it was really, really bad. And I started to believe what they were saying. It made me really hate myself so much that I, and there's like a pause and Charlie, I can't tell if they were already, yeah, I guess they were already holding hands. Mm-hmm. yeah so he just like kind of looks down he says i used to um he has no idea like how to say it yeah i used to cut myself sometimes i don't want to feel like that again and nick is so worried and again just like immediately pulls him into a hug mm-hmm. and cuddles him and it says do you still do that now and then my heart shatters into a billion pieces because he says no i mean hardly ever Yes, which is different because in the show, he just outright denies it. Yeah. Um, And at least here, he's admitting a little bit that, yeah, it does sometimes happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, he immediately apologizes. And Nick is like, no, no, don't apologize. And he says, can you tell me if you ever feel that way or if you ever feel that bad again? And Charlie kind of like thinks on it and says, yeah, I promise, which is another difference because in the show, he never says, I never promises. Yeah. I don't prefer that we immediately get the one-two punch of David right after. Yeah, it's really rude. But yeah, so this is like a flipped around in the show. But I, it makes me, like the second that I was rereading this and then I saw the Iron Man cover and realized like what scene we were about to go into, I was like, Really? No! <laughs> yeah. Like what a negative fucking day for Charlie. Uh-huh. Like first off. For both of them, but. Yeah, first off, no Nick at school. Second off, having to have this really intense conversation with Nick. Third of all, David. (laughs) Fucking David. Uh Uh-huh. I love that they're cuddling in bed with Nellie. Like, this is a tiny-ass bed. How the hell are two, like, pretty tall teenage boys and a dog? (laughs) To be fair, Charlie's pretty lean. Like, he's... It's true. Like, thin, so... But his limbs are long. Yeah, and also, I mean... It looks like it's at least a full, like from the angle in this panel with the Iron Man poster, it looks like it's at least a full. For sure. I just am like putting myself in that place. Like this is more crowded than it probably looks on (laughs) in that panel. Yeah. Which I guess doesn't matter if you're laying on your boyfriend. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're watching a movie. I'm assuming Iron Man. Yeah, because we see the dvd case yeah which throwback to being able to put dvds in your laptop i know so charlie's fallen asleep on nick Mm -hmm. and nick kind of like nudges him wakes him up he says hey are you tired or is this movie really boring (laughs) and star charlie stretches and says haha just tired i haven't been sleeping well because of exams And Nick's like, well, my shoulder is available for naps anytime. (laughs) So Nick pauses it and says, hey, do you want something to eat? And Charlie brushes him off, says, no, he's fine. Nick says, are you sure you haven't eaten since lunch, right? And Charlie says, I'm fine, like doubles down on it. I'm fine. I'm not much of a snacker with a smiley face in the text (laughs) next to it, which because we've got like we're like at 
behind Charlie at this shot. So it's showing us that he's like probably putting on like a pretty good physical front as well. Yeah. He says, I'll have a cup of tea though. It's also not a lie though. Like it's not like he's saying like, I'm not hungry. He's saying he's not much of a snacker, which I think is true. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Nick gets a a little giggle out of that. And he says, you're such an old man. (laughs) (laughs) And he goes down, he makes some tea and some toast. He's coming back up the stairs and he can hear murmurs. And then we see him outside of his door and we see the little bubbles say, nice. And where did you meet? Oh, um, in the same form. And he's immediately. Mine says at school. Oh, fascinating. Again, probably an Americanization. Yeah. We don't have form. Mm-hmm. Here. So he goes in and he says, David, cutting him off. And he says, oh, there he is. And you. You don't get to see his face, but we did just see Nick's face, and he still got the, like, surprise lines coming out of his face, so I'm assuming that his face has not changed in any way. Yeah. And David says, Jesus, don't shit yourself. I'm just making friends with Charlie. And Charlie is looking very fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, got Nelly beside him. Nick immediately, like, kind of towers over (laughs) David and says, yeah, well, we're busy. Fuck off. And David says, all right, all right, keep your tits on. And he, like, leans over and whispers to Charlie, you okay? And he's like, I'm fine. He puts the stuff down. And you could tell, like, while that is happening, David turns around and says, I just wanted to meet the guy who turned my little brother gay. Nick, like, whips around. Yeah. And then David being a fucking prick is like, yeah, mom told me. Which is, like, gross on so many levels, because, like, A, we know Sarah would never, and then Sarah yeah. also tells us she would never. Right. And it's, like, this awful, like, thing of, like, trying to, like, turn Nick against Sarah yes. as well. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Yeah. Also, I do love how smarmy David looks. Yeah. Like, really well done in the, like, character design. Yeah. I also like the the next panel of them, like, gearing up for battle <laughs> like it looks like the like loading screen of like a fighting game. <laughs> yeah like they yeah like they're about to fight yeah and he says should have always known you'd turn out to be gay and then we get our iconic shot I'm bi actually yes and so what i'm bi actually if you're gonna be gay at least admit you're gay to which i wrote fuck off david yep and nick like follows him out the door this is why i didn't want to tell you Haha, too late now. And Charlie is looking absolutely destroyed. Yeah. And David continues to be one of the most odious human beings on the planet. And says, what? I'm not allowed to be skeptical when you're randomly deciding you're gay. And he's like, no, you're not. God, I knew you'd react like this. And Charlie and Nellie are following them down the stairs. Even Nellie looks concerned. Yeah, I love in the show that they made her growl. (laughs) When he when he entered the room. Rightly so. Yeah. I'm sure David never takes her out on walks, and I'm sure. And dogs never... just know, like, they know an asshole's energy. Yep. <sighs> so David's like, like, what? And then we get Nick, like, throwing his arms out and screaming, like, a homophobic piece of shit. And that's when Sarah walks in and is like, language, boys, what is going on? And Nick is exasperated, and he's like, Mom, why did you tell him about Charlie? And she's like, darling, I didn't. I'd never. That's up to you if and when you want to tell people, including David and your dad. And he's like, what? And then we get David, like, shrugging his jacket off, and he's like, okay, fine. I found it on my own. Not my fault you leave photos of you kissing lying around your room. To which I have to ask, David, why the fuck were you in his room? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have, like, you're not even, like, using some bullshit excuse of, like, getting his switch. Right. Like, why? And, like, that makes me question, like, did he go in there to, like, bug Charlie just to bug Charlie and then saw the pictures and put two and two together? Do you think Mm -hmm. he knew before he went in to bug Charlie? Yeah. Like, but knowing David... I feel like the first thing he did when he got home was walk into Nick's room. Just Mm -hmm. being fucking... Nosy. Yeah. Yeah. So then we see Nick, like, processing this. We see the little photo booth pictures. And then David, like, brings him back, saying, I mean, come on, Mom. He's saying he's bi. What a load of absolute bullshit. And she cuts him off. And then he, like, squares up side by side to Nick and says he can't even admit he's gay. 
and Nick explodes. Yeah. He says, I hate you. Oh, fuck off. Boys, that is enough. And then Charlie just like Nick. Mm -hmm. And Nick, the way that he like turns, he's like completely forgotten that Charlie's there, like hasn't realized that Charlie's been following him down the stairs this whole time. Yeah. And he's like, um, should I go home? I love that Nellie left, like she never left Charlie's side. She's protecting him. Yeah, she stayed with him the whole time. Yeah. Dogs can tell when you're stressed and when you need them. It's magic. Yeah. And you know, she was like, well, Sarah's here. So Nick can have Sarah and I'll watch after Charlie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, And Nick is kind of like at a loss for words. And then he says, maybe that's a good idea. I'm so sorry. I don't want him to start picking on you too. At which point we see that Sarah has pulled David aside and is uh, yelling at him says david you had no right to search through nick's stuff and he says it was just lying there on his bookshelf it's not my fault again i say why the fuck were you in his room yeah and the fact that it's not even like in the show it's on his wall yeah this was lying on the bookshelf so what were you fucking doing what were you doing over there right and nick says i'm sorry and charlie says nick it's fine will you be okay and they kiss they kiss which hurts less than in the show because in the show they don't kiss they don't mm-hmm. even hug nothing he just walks into the door and says he's sorry and shuts it you know what really hurts though is that we never get an answer to the question will you be okay yeah because he doesn't know he doesn't know in that moment yeah and so right nick says i'm so sorry i'll text you in a bit and in the background we hear david and sarah arguing still you're being selfish david and then david says he's being selfish for not telling me this makes me want to fucking scream <laughs> yep because he doesn't owe you shit david what have you ever done to like earn it yeah make yourself even a possibility for someone that he would even talk to about this yeah <sighs> and also like you just got back even if he wanted to tell you you've given him no time All you've done is bully the fuck out of him from the second you saw him. Yeah. And so the door shuts and Charlie is sad. Yeah. And the panels like dissolve into leaves. Mm -hmm. And then we see Charlie in bed texting Nick. And he said, why is being out so complicated? In books and films, there's just one big coming out scene and then everything is just fine. Ha ha. Real life isn't like that, I guess. I get like this close-up of him as he's tapping and he is not looking good he's Mm -hmm. looking extremely stressed and he like rolls over and cuddles up and texts are you awake and then we cut back to the nelson household where the boys are still arguing yes nick slams the door just fuck off and leave me alone no need to have a tantrum boys no shouting i do feel like sarah there's probably something more that you could have done at this yeah, point. Yeah, I was going to say, again, I'm disappointed in Sarah's reaction. Just trying to keep them apart and amicable is not enough. You really mm-hmm. need to put your foot down and let David know that he has to respect his brother as a human being, regardless yeah. of literally anything about him. And like, I think a lot of the future issues could have been stopped in this moment. I know I said this on our episode, but, like, if she had just laid down the law that this was unacceptable, things wouldn't have developed further. Yeah. Nick has just gotten out of a stress shower, no doubt. (laughs) Um, And his phone is buzz, buzz, buzzing with all these texts that Charlie (laughs) has just sent. And Nellie's like, why is this thing vibrating so much? Yeah. Like, little question mark. What's happening? (laughs) And Nick lumps down onto his bed. Mm-hmm. and sees all of these texts and is like shit sorry i meant to message you but my brother's being a dick he literally won't stop pestering me might be better if you don't come over here until he's back at uni which is like geez yeah charlie sits up and he like did not like hearing that at all he looks like no. he's about to cry mm-hmm. like he sends like a sad emoji and nick says it was my fault for not telling him sooner tbh And I'm like, no, don't let David win. Yeah. Charlie says, no, you shouldn't have to tell him if you don't want to, which is true. And Nick says, I guess he would have found out eventually one way or another. I should probably call my dad soon and tell him too. And Charlie says, you don't have to. You can take your time. And Nick says, I want him to know about you. Plus, I want to be the one to tell him, not David. And like, I feel like this is such an important 
like part of the conversation of like wanting people to find out from you and not through the yeah. grapevine yes and like it complicating things so much further because like on the one hand like yes you should be able to do this on your own time and and all of these things but on the other hand like you do have to like balance these factors right of like not wanting other people to hear it from not you and not wanting it to like kind of spiral out of control like if you're Mm -hmm. the one who's able to tell people you can control the narrative and we're kind of seeing that with the way that david is reacting yeah and charlie like definitely starts to cry at this point Mm -hmm. this panel hurts my little feelings yeah he says i'm so sorry this is all my fault you shouldn't have to feel rushed or pressured by anyone which like i don't know how he got that this was his fault but we all, we all I do it. I think that that's just Charlie's default position is assuming that it's somehow his fault. I know. And like, see, the sad thing is like, I can like hear the rationalization yeah. in his mind. If I had never come over, he never would have, you know, yeah. but like, fuck that. Yeah, absolutely. And Nick says, Charlie, this is not your fault. Coming out is hard and complicated, right? And it doesn't all happen at once and it doesn't always go right. Sometimes it probably doesn't even happen at all. Coming out to my mom was amazing, and I never expected it to go super well with everyone, and it's not your fault. I just want people to know who I am and to know that you're my boyfriend and know that, and I know that not everyone will like it, but I'm ready for that. We're probably going to have to come out hundreds more times in our lives. It might be shitty sometimes, but I promise I'm okay, and it's all worth it. And then we get Charlie sitting up, tap, tap, tap. And hesitation mm-hmm. face. And we see that he has typed, I love you. Mm-hmm. And then he just looks at it and deletes it. And it's like cut in between with this little panel of Nellie, like giving Nick a bunch of kisses. Yeah. And then Charlie says, I wish we could just nap and watch movies all the time and nobody bothered us. I'm like, same, Charlie. Yeah. Same. Nick's like, that's the dream. I'm like, yeah, for all of us. <laughs> for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and he's cuddling Kitty. Mm-hmm. And then we like jump ahead in time to right, like Nick is in the library or maybe the cafeteria. I can't quite tell. And he's texting Nick and he's on the bus and he's texting Nick. I feel like that first panel is form. Maybe. Yeah, I just can't tell. Yeah, I think it's somewhere in the I think it's in, in form, form because there's the empty seat next to him. Yeah, that's a good point. And Nick is like on the beach. No, at the park. Mm hmm. So he's like walking Nelly. He's chilling at home, playing a video game. One week later, Charlie says, or no, Tao says, thank God it's nearly the summer holidays. And Alan says, and nearly the Paris trip. And Tao says, I got to go to drama. So I'll see you all at lunch. Scurries off. We see mm-hmm. Charlie and Alan. Charlie's still like, he's looking stressed. Yeah, and they're, like, walking into class, and I I love that on the board it says learning objectives to examine, and, like, we don't see the rest of it, but it's just, like, spelling out, yep, you're walking into a classroom. Yeah. And, (laughs) wait, once they're sat down, Charlie is having a little bit of a crisis, and he's like, God, I need to tell him about Nick. Tao's one of my best friends, and Alan said, well, do you want to tell him? No hesitation from Charlie. Yeah. And he says, yeah, definitely and then alid is like look i know i said it wasn't a good idea but i don't know maybe i was sort of projecting that perks charlie up (laughs) yeah what do you mean what do you mean um he says i well i have this friend i've known him since we were really small and it's becoming something romantic and i love how it's like that's a different line Oh. Mine says, and it's becoming something more than friendship. Ooh, I wonder if that's a, another um, change for the published version. Let's see. This is 105 in my edition. Oh, uh, no, it says romantic. Hmm. On this one, dot, 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 romantic. There's no hesitation in the online version. It just says, and it's becoming something more than friendship. Yeah, my, it says something dot, 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 romantic. Yeah. I really love the way that, like, we have on the um, right side the, like, two panels of Alan and Charlie, but then also they're both melting yeah. in the left into the leaves, and, like, from the back, we have Alan, Alan and, and Daniel. Dan. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's really cute. And Alad says, but we don't want or need to tell anyone about it for now anyway, because right now it's just our thing. And he says, Alad, you could have told me. Which is not, I'm like, he could have, but I think his reasoning of not telling anyone because it's their thing, that, that includes friends. Like that is Yeah, like it's that not is, the, that's not the point, right. which I think is what Alad kind of like gets to in this next thing of like, I know, but this is my point. This whole deal with you and Nick being out to people, I think you need to stop worrying about anyone else's feelings. Yes. I know Tao's one of your best friends, but if you don't think now is a good time to tell him, you don't have to. It was different for you because you were outed and you didn't have any control, but this time you do. There's this idea that if you're not straight, you have to tell all your family and friends immediately, like you owe it to them, but you don't. You don't have to do anything until you're ready. This isn't about Tal right now. This is about you and Nick. And I really like this, but I also, this is something that I get conflicted about all of the time. And I feel like I've talked about this before is like, I feel like Nick and Charlie are in this really awkward place because they want to be able to be out. They want to be able to hold hands and hug and kiss and be coupley in public, but they also like, maybe don't feel fully ready to be out right and so like that's where the conflict comes in and i feel like a lot of the advice that they're getting and i i I, everyone's doing the best that they can but i feel like a lot of the advice that they're getting doesn't really understand the nuance of like those two conflicting feelings that the two of them are having yeah absolutely of like not wanting to keep it a secret anymore, but also like struggling to navigate the complexities of coming out. Yes. But yeah. I, I I'm but like at the same time, I think that there is some like really important stuff in here about like it's not about anyone else's feelings, it's just about the two of you. Yeah. I am of two minds in this. <laughs> yeah. It, because it's a tricky situation, right? There is there yeah. is so much nuance. Mm-hmm. Charlie's like, how are you so smart? <laughs> And he says, what do you want to do? And Charlie thinks about it for a second. He says, I just, I don't want what happened to me to happen to Nick. Which doesn't really answer the question and I think is like really telling. Yeah. Because, I I mean, I do think that Charlie's trauma is a big thing that's getting in the way here. And understandably so. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not saying like, Charlie... (laughs) I I think that it, like, really plays into the fact that Charlie has all of this, like, unresolved trauma and all of these unresolved things that he needs to deal with and able to really move forward, which is what we see kind of as we progress into the rest of this volume and into the next one. Yeah. But, like, it is kind of this, like, defining thing that's getting in the way because he can't even say, like, I want to be out or I want to stay. Right. You know, I want to keep it a secret still. He only is focused on not letting what happened to him happen to nick right and i feel like that's like incredibly telling yeah and alad sees it too yeah for sure and charlie changes the subject and says anyway tell me about this boy Um, (laughs) alad's like what no (laughs) come on not even his name alad says um it's daniel which is really fun for us to like be looking back at these after just having done radio silence for book club Mm -hmm. also up in the panel when he says I've known him since I was since we were really small, he's got like literal hearts in his eyes, which is yeah. adorable. Mm-hmm. It's so cute. Very cute. And that is where we have decided to stop for this episode because you turn the page and they're going to Paris. <laughs> yep. What did you decide for your favorite panel? Um, favorite panel, fudge. Um or quote, whatever have- you want to start with. All right. I think for quotes, I am going to go with uh, Tori's Stop Saying Hanky Panky. Nice. (laughs) uh, Which might be slightly influenced by the show, but it's also just great. Yeah, phenomenal. And then for my favorite panel, it's hard. I have a few, but I think I'm actually going to go with like the full body shot of Nick kind of like thinking about like the good things that have happened with Cy, Christian, and Otis, and like the yeah. kind of um like memories there and like the conflict in his like face. It's it's really well done. And I think that it it does a lot in terms of like 
storytelling with not a lot of, you know, just with just images without right. any words. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. For my quote, I went with Alad there at the end saying, there's this idea that if you're straight, you have to tell your family and friends immediately, like you owe it to them, mm -hmm. but you don't, you don't have to do anything until you're ready, which, and we also didn't mention that like they flipped that, like Charlie gets to say that line in the show, which I think is interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just such a true statement. You, and it is there, like you do feel that pressure, like, like you feel like you have to tell people and you don't. Yeah. You don't owe anybody anything. Um, and then, yeah, I had a harder time picking <laughs> picking a panel because there's there's a so lot many yeah. good ones. Uh, but I decided to just like follow the one that made me the happiest. And so I'm going with the like giggly, blushy, hugging his phone mm -hmm. Nick after the like energy flow discussion <laughs> where he yeah. just like is so happy and like, you can tell he's like giggling and just like it makes me giggle and like kick my feet. So <laughs> that's what I'm going with for this round. But there's a lot of really good ones. Yeah. Well, I think that just about wraps us up for now and we will be back soon. If you want to follow us online, we are at Why Are We Cast on all platforms. And if you enjoyed this recording, please consider rating and reviewing us as it will help others find us. And until next time, bye. Bye.